guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, it's Effie. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing and reacting to several TikToks that I came across that are chronic pain, chronic illness, disability, rheumatoid arthritis, and arthritis related. And I chose these because I felt that they are educational, funny, and they just spit a lot of truth. Stay tuned because that is coming all right up. a staple of my jokes since I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis at 16 because it is so weird being that one little young person amongst all the grannies exchanging information about your biologics. Um, but I one time told this to my rheumatologist and she looked at me so confused because she said that most of her clients were women under 30. So, so can someone get the Meredith Knees group chat started so we can all make appointments at the same time? Wow, so I have never met a rheumatologist before who had all her patients under 30. Unless it was a pediatric rheumatologist, so that's something different. That's a doctor who treats kids and young adults, teenagers and stuff who are diagnosed with juvenile arthritis. So that would make sense if that was the type of rheumatologist she was seeing. You know, when I have gone to appointments or I'm in the waiting room, no one talks ever about their biologics. When I have gone to group swimming classes, it would only be be older people, men and women, grandparents, you know, people who are over 50. And it was an aquatic swim class for knees and hips. A lot of people during those ages, they start having issues with those areas of their body. So of course, they would be there for rehab or whatnot. And I was there because I had to go for pre-rehab before my surgery to get some more strength and stuff. So they were really welcoming though. All of them laughed and smiled, asked me my name, and they didn't converse with me too much. I think they knew that I was you know, a little nervous and the only one that was younger than them. So I felt that they were intuitive in the fact that they should just kind of keep it simple and to the point. And I think at one point they thought that I was the instructor. And once the aquatic teacher came in to start the class, it was obvious that I wasn't the teacher. With this TikTok, I can't relate 100% because elderly people have been so welcoming in my arthritis journey. These are some of the first people I connected with before I met anyone my age. No one ever made me feel left out or less than like I sometimes feel in younger settings too, you know? This one made by another day with our A, Allie, she has an amazing TikTok account, you guys. I feel like she's my spirit animal. The way she presents herself is how I am, a little bit closed doors with people who know me personally. And so like she says in her TikTok, a lot of people are forced to work when they are not able to, you know? And being on disability benefits, though, they do have a work program. You have to work within their limits, so like part-time work would be good to do. They often say that they want people on disability to work. To anyone that has a disability or- I like this one. What's the worst thing a teacher's ever said about it? So I grew up with juvenile arthritis, and I always heard from so many people my entire life, oh no, that's an old person's disease. You don't have that. But one day I had a substitute teacher in second grade and the substitute teacher didn't know that I had arthritis. So when I went up to her and I said, hey, I need to go to the nurse's office. I need some um, some medication and uh, some heating pads and like to lay down. And she's like, why? And I said, because I have arthritis. And she said, no, you don't, you don't have that. I would know that because my grandparents have that. So you don't have that. So then I was too nervous in second grade to really like make a statement about it. So I just sat back down and by the time I tried to get back up, I couldn't walk anymore because I was in so much fucking pain. So <laughs> yeah. This really almost made me cry. That's so sad that her age had to go through that. You know, I didn't grow up necessarily with juvenile arthritis. I was diagnosed at 18, but Essentially, I was still a kid. I talked about this recently in one of my videos about going through school with our chronic illness. As we know, kids get arthritis. It's a known thing, yes, and if you don't know, now you know. I feel that schools now are doing a lot better than they did back in the day when it comes to accessibility and accommodations. If you find that your child, if you're watching and you're a parent, and not getting the accommodations and the fair treatment that they need, then speak up immediately because what she went through is unacceptable. No one should ever be denied any sort of help, you know, if they're not feeling well. A lot of times when kids express something, they're immediately ignored. Like, oh, don't worry about it, it's growing pains, or you're just being emotional. It's like, 
You know, a lot of kids are perceptive into the way they feel. So it's important for people who are older to pay attention to that because I feel that kids are very honest. If you want to know something, ask a kid because they will tell you hands down anything. If something sucks, if something tastes bad, if they love something, if they think something's funny, if something hurts, they would tell you, you know? I feel like this should be shared with every school. Another good song. Fake it till you make it. Yeah, a lot of us do fake it. I mean, we say we're fine, but we're not really fine. We just go with it because otherwise we won't be able to go to that event do whatever we need to do and we just push through. People with chronic pain and chronic illness, we are freaking warriors. And that's why a lot of people say that we are warriors because we get up and keep going even when it's hard. And yes, of course, we have our rest days and we have days when we say no, we can't do it because our spoons are low. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this spoon theory. And a ton of self care, rest, and saying no when you need to, yep. Three great tips right there. So yeah, this is one of the last ones. I feel this is so relatable. She even says, my heart goes out to you if you can relate. Just watch it because you'll see what I'm saying. Yeah, I feel like, how can you really answer these type of comments, you know? It's like, oh, you poor thing, you're too young for arthritis, or, you know, you shouldn't have this disease, or, Blah, 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 blah. For the you are too young for arthritis comment too, a lot of people who receive that from others, it's like, yes, we know that we are young. I know my age, I know when I was born. You don't have to tell me that I'm young, you know? And so I think like a lot of times, people in the community were more sensitive to these comments because even though people come from a good place, oftentimes some don't. Hearing these type of things can sometimes trigger a lot of the grief that is associated with autoimmune diseases and chronic illnesses, disabilities. I just don't listen to what people say when it comes to those comments anymore because I know what I go through, I know who I am, and so like I don't care you know, what people say. In the beginning years though, I hated when people say, oh, you don't look sick, or you're too young for arthritis. Like that used to get to me a lot. And if you hear over and over and over again, it's like, okay, what am I supposed to say to that? Smile, nod, or just look away like she did. Kind of like, you know, depressed, to be honest. I like her sassiness. This is something I would say too. Yeah, I have a chronic illness. You don't look sick, someone's asking that. And you don't look stupid. I think that's on a shirt somewhere too. I would buy that shirt too. I love collecting t-shirts by the way. So if anyone knows any good ones with some awesome slogans, let me know. And last but not least, I wanted to share a few of my own. And if you haven't noticed, I have my headphones in because I'm looking at the videos on my phone so I don't have to have double noise here when I'm going back and putting this all together for you guys. Let me know what you guys think about this one. These are my two favorite ones I've created. I'm proud of myself, okay? <laughs> nah, real talk right there. So yeah, if anyone's wondering, I never have read the side effect pamphlet. I've always just directly talked to my doctors. Sometimes had a date with Dr. Google, looking things up, and then I stopped myself because it was getting out of hand. So I don't recommend that. And here's my other one. This took me two hours. It's great, by the way. My biggest pet peeve is not being able to lift my injection out of the tray. Yeah, so this is just my pet peeve about my methotrexate injections being packaged in an annoying way and when they're in this four pack here, sometimes the first one is really hard to take out, though I did find a hack. Here as you see the tray, but when they're packed as a four here, the first one can be really hard to take out. So as you see here, you have to pinch and grip which can be pretty painful if you have joint damage, inflammation and pain, blah, blah, blah. And I accidentally figured out a solution to this problem while I was recording my methotrexate injection video. So I had the tray like this vertically and I was pressing on one of the end injections here with my hand because I was holding it like this. I held one of them and it just flew out. So that's what I'm going to do from now on. Like I said, it took me two hours to create that. And that's why I basically stopped creating TikToks because I just was wasting a lot of my own time. I know people who create TikToks, they're fast and they can do it and 
they're just, you have to be like a certain type of breed, I feel like, to make TikToks. You know, those people who are doing it, you're doing a damn good job of it, so keep going. All right, that's all I have for this video. And if you are on TikTok, make sure to give these creators a follow and support their content because making these type of videos is not easy by any means. And while I didn't really keep up with creating TikToks, I love watching them. So whoever is on TikTok and you guys keep creating content, keep going because everyone needs your educational, funny, and relatable content. Before I go, I want to announce the Spoonie Star Supporter of the Week. Here they are. Thank you guys so much for your love and your support. And if you want to be my next shout out in my next video, all you gotta do is stay active on my Instagram and YouTube channel and I pick someone at random every time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys have any other ideas for reaction videos, I love doing these, so comment below and let me know. Until next time, bye! Thank you.